Endurance Junkie Podcast, episode 39. Junkie, welcome to another episode of the Endurance Junkie podcast, the show where I will be interviewing some of the fastest, smartest, and most inspiring people active in the endurance world today. Dr. Jane E. Hunt is Assistant Professor in the Faculty of Society and Design at Bond University in Australia. She's also the author of Multisport Dreaming, The Foundations of Triathlon in Australia. Being an avid runner and triathlete herself, writing this project offered her a perfect way of combining her interest and in research. Jane, thanks for uh, taking the time to chat here today. Um, for those of us who don't know you, can you start off by uh, telling us a bit about uh, yourself and uh, your sporting background? Hi, thank you, yes. Uh, my sporting background is um, I'm a very, you know, I'm a middle of the pack triathlete. Before I started in triathlon, I uh, had taken up running uh, and found that I enjoyed endurance distances. Uh, I did the Great Wall of China uh, marathon uh, one time and that was a lot of fun. Uh, so I enjoyed running and found that I was reasonably good at it. Um, but my husband decided he wanted to, to do triathlon and um, I used to go and watch uh, him doing the triathlons and eventually all the club members, triathlon club members persuaded me to have a go. <laughs> and I might be an Australian, but I'm not a very good um, swimmer. So mm -hmm. first I had to learn how to swim and actually learning to swim and cycle and um, put it all together as a triathlon made me feel really good. It was it was a, a great feeling. And, and like many people, you cross the finish line and you go, wow, now I want to do something longer. <laughs> so, you know, then of course I did try, um, Ironman and so on and just uh, really enjoyed um, the, the whole experience, the whole triathlon journey. So I'm, I'm a middle of the pack triathlete, but I have had a lot of fun and, and uh, it really made me feel good about myself as a person. Yeah, right. And you were able to combine that with, uh, of course, a, a family life and then uh, you work as a as professor at, uh, at uh, Bond University. What, uh, what do you do there? Oh, I lecture mostly to international students. I teach Australian history, Australian popular culture, Australian studies, all that sort of thing. Um, and uh, I originally, uh, as, a, as a lecturer, you always do research on the side. You, you can't help but ask questions and research things. But what I was researching previously, um, I got bored with. <laughs> uh, some professors had said, oh, that's very interesting. Go and research that. And I researched it. But I realized I was only talking to about 200 professors around the world. And I thought I'd rather write about something that I'm interested in. Uh, so I had a, a whinge to my husband one day and um, said, I'd like to write about something more interesting. And he said, well, what about triathlon? Uh, he said, you know, you're, you're passionate about it and you enjoy it. And, and it's interesting. And there's a story there to be written. Uh, and at first I thought, well, um, you know, there's probably other people out there who know more about the sport than me. Am I the right person for it? Uh, but when I started asking around, I went to um, Triathlon Australia. We're having a conference in uh, 2010, and I went to that conference and asked around there. And uh, what I found was there's a lot of people interested in putting the history of the sport together, but no one with the experience or the qualifications or the, you know, the, the um, understanding of how you do that. And so basically they all said, yeah, go ahead and do it. <laughs> and so that was in 2010 and it started from there. Yeah, it must have been a, a pretty uh, daunting task because you, you, yeah, you're covering almost 30 years of, uh, of uh, a sport and yeah, one of the, the big nations of the sport. Yes, <laughs> I, I, there were moments when I felt quite overwhelmed. Uh, it's quite funny actually, a lot of times um, I parallel uh, in my head I used uh, the the idea of doing an Ironman as a parallel uh, for what I was doing with the book and instead of just thinking about, oh my gosh, how am I going to get through all of that, I just focused on the small bits, you know, uh, with the research. It's just like, okay, well, I, uh, you know, get to this person, get to that person, get to that person, try to gather information, uh, break it down into smaller steps rather than thinking about the whole big um, journey and getting um, stressed about the big journey. Um, and I have to admit, when I sat down to actually start writing, uh, the first three chapters I had to rewrite because I, even when you know where you're heading 
actually doing it is is another question. It, there's always that moment when you go, oh, now I understand what I'm doing. Uh, so I rewrote the first three chapters and then from there on it went fairly quickly um, and uh, progressed fairly well and it was not a matter of feeling overwhelmed by it but just oh, I really want to get it done now I know what I'm doing and I just want to get it out there um, so yeah an overwhelming process but that I, I, as I said to my husband at the start that's what I'm trained to do and I, I kind of felt like I knew that I could do it uh, you know when I did a PhD that's exactly what I did the same thing I, I wrote um, about a period a lot of people over a period of 50 years and put it into a story that worked and I thought I felt that I could do that as well with the, the triathlon story mm -hmm. I've got the book right here in front of me and it's it's a it's an amazing piece of work and it's got some some stunning photography in there as well um where, where did that all come from well um uh, um many of the um good quality photographs in that uh came from Delhi car it was like Christmas one day I um I had a, a, a chat with him uh, I interviewed him as well for the book uh, and um, uh, we talked about all the old photos that he had that weren't in digital format so I managed to get funding from my university so he could convert those into digital format and then he just sent me uh, a one terabyte hard drive <laughs> with <laughs> you know it, with all these um, deli car photos it was like I said it was like Christmas I was just going through it going oh my gosh this man is an artist he's just brilliant uh, you know, he's not just taking a picture of a cyclist or a swimmer. He catches something really magic. Um, you know, you can make a single drop just sort of scintillate and then you suddenly realise there's a whole, like, Olympic race going on in the background <laughs> and yet there, here's this sparkling, you know, bit of water in the foreground. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so I was very, very fortunate to have um, that as a resource um, and that really – I've got photos – from Delhi Car from about 1991 onwards, I think. But I also was lucky that when I researched, uh, almost everyone that I went to talk to gave me, uh, loaned me material, which I brought back to uh, my office and I scanned. Um, and then I, uh, they gave me permission to use the photographs and so on. Uh, so I got a lot of really classic old school photo photographs as well, as you can probably see there. <laughs> um, and things that you look at and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did tri triathlons wearing those clothes or riding those bikes or, or riding on that sort of course or, uh, you know, and so on. Um, so I was very lucky to have a lot of those old school photographs as well as the beautiful Delhi car photographs as well. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool to see all those uh, ancient Oakley uh, sunglasses and the fluorescent uh, race clothing and the the pretty, um, yeah, um, pretty old bikes and all that. It's, it's pretty nice yeah. to see. Um, yeah. You also interviewed over three hundred uh, people, I guess, and, and you have you know over three hundred athlete profiles in here. Uh, I, I have. Uh... In terms of the athlete profiles, I've focused just on um, mostly on Australian world champions or people who starred uh, at the very high level during the, the evolution of the sport. And of course, we had quite a few of those in Australia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, so I interviewed all those people that were um, focused in the profiles, but I also interviewed, I tried to get a range of experiences and you know I could interview another 500 people. There are so many people with wonderful experiences that were part of the adventure of the evolution of the sport from nothing into what it is today um so a lot of my um interviews were with these um you know world champions and with um uh, uh, you know greg welch and and um michaela michaela jones and emma carney and uh jackie uh fairweather of course and um uh many others as well uh but i also uh, talked to age, age group groupers people who just were there and enjoying triathlon day in day out year in year out throughout the um the evolution of the sport yeah, cool now, what do you see like as as the some of the key moments of of triathlon in australia okay um Obviously, on the world stage, um, uh, Australia featured in particular in the 1990s. I, I do think that there are some key moments in the 1980s that laid the foundation for all of that that happened in the 1990s. Um, uh, you know, the, the even the first race directors who try to figure out how you do triathlon and, and got a uh, started a tradition of triathlon practice, you know, of, of people be, being triathletes and going and doing triathlons. If you don't have that grassroots, then you don't have uh, a sport. Um, and then in the late 1980s, we have the beginning of a national tour or a national circuit. 
and um, some very competitive young men in particular, um, mostly men at that stage and a few young women as well, who competed on the national circuit around Australia uh, against each other. So we have people like, you know, Brad Bevan and um, Spot Anderson, who was very good at that stage. Um, uh, Greg Welch was just coming out. There was Troy Fiddler. Um, and I feel really bad. Oh, Stephen Foster, of course, who was probably one of the early young stars, and Nick Croft, who was one of the early young stars uh, in the men's field. They were all competing against each other. And people recognised them all, uh, across the triathlon community around Australia. And so I feel that by the late 1980s, you have, um, and, and in 1990, you have what I call the national moment, when there's a, sort of like this recognition of triathletes from across Australia and a sense that the national tour just emer emerging um, and uh, this real sense of these are the people who are at the top of our field. Uh, but then, of course, uh, I don't know if it's just Australians, but uh, the athletes in particular weren't content to just be at the top of their field in Australia. And naturally, they look to the rest of the world and they go, well, how do we compare to the rest of the world? Um, and one of my favourite chapters in the book is Chapter 5, which is really about the little Aussie battlers, <laughs> you know, these, um, the, these little Aussie guys and girls, mostly guys, who, who headed off to the Northern Hemisphere and, and, and tested themselves out against the world's best. You know, sort of um, uh, when um, uh, Stephen Foster went across to uh, America and raced in um, Chicago and won Chicago. Um, a, a, and it was like, what's this little Aussie guy doing winning Chicago? Uh, and then they, uh, they, they went on a tour in 1989 around Europe before the first ITU World Championships. And it's like a, um, almost like a comedy. You could do a movie, a, a comedy movie really around what those guys went through, <laughs> um, touring around Europe with no money. Um, and uh, very little language and, and um, broken bikes and stolen bikes and accidents left, right and centre. Uh, you know, they were just little Aussie battlers just um, uh, trying to make their way in the international field. But when they actually got to compete against the rest of the world, then suddenly everyone went, hey, these Aussies actually can, they're, they're pretty good. And that's really, to me, the starting point of the of the heyday of triathlon for Australia, and you know, the starting point of the 1990s when we had world champions every year and um, Brad Bevan winning um, the World Cup Series every year and then Miles Stewart and then, you know, all, there's always Australians up there. Um, so, yeah, uh, that was, to me, a really key moment in the evolution of the sport for Australia. Yeah, yeah I really remember that back in the day when, when I started, is that, especially here in, in Belgium and, and France and yeah, it was sort of like the the cool thing to have was to have an Australian in your team, and uh, so he was able to to win races and and put your uh, your, your team as a, a you know in, in the in the limelight. Yeah, well, it's funny actually. Um, once uh, the Australians discovered that oh, you can you can uh, get a contract on a French team or something, uh, it's amazing how many of them uh, did head over. And and there's again, you you could write a book just about the adventures on um, uh, uh, that all these Australians just meandering around um, uh, France and, and Germany and, and um, I guess Belgium as well, uh, just just earning their way through all these little club races and, and uh, that, that circuit that you're talking about and just smashing themselves so that they can earn a little bit of extra prize money. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It's, it's just, it was a cool era, I think, for triathlon and um, yeah, yeah I've, I've had a chance to interview a couple of people and, and hear these stories, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's amazing. Um, what did the the Olympics do for uh, for triathlon in Australia? You know, of course, you had the the first uh, Olympic race there at the Sydney Olympics in two thousand. I think uh, the thought of the Olympics in uh, Sydney is, uh, did the most for triathlon in Australia. I mean, really, the, the the big heyday for Australia was in the 1990s. With uh, once uh, the Olympics had been accepted onto the program of the Sydney 2000 Olympics, uh, triathlon had been accepted onto the program of the Sydney 2000 Olympics. Once that had been accepted, and all the Australian triathletes are looking at each other, and Triathlon Australia is looking at them, going, "We have the world's best best triathletes here." Uh, so everyone, I, uh, to an extent, was dreaming about you know Olympic glory. Uh, wow, maybe I can be on the Olympic team, and I think that was behind a lot of the. Um, uh, certainly, was a part of uh, uh, the heyday of the 1990s for for triathlon in Australia. Was that dreaming about uh, Olympic glory and and being part of that? Uh, I, and I really think that uh, that it gave the sport in Australia a lot of credibility so that uh, and we had 
uh, of course, um, some innovators who came up with the wonderful professional form Formula One series, and that was um, televised on TV. Uh, and I think, again, knowing that the, the Australian triathletes who were being televised on TV were world champions and the best in the world, um, you know, there's this real expectation that when triathlon um, was uh, the triathlon was held at the Sydney 2000 Olympics, there were going to be triathletes uh, Australians up there winning, you know, medals and winning gold. Uh, so th from the government level through to the public level through to the triathlon level, uh, that was really there was so much hope and enthusiasm and so much energy surrounding um, Olympic triathlon at that stage. Yeah. Okay. Um... Uh, yeah, I told you the story before. Like we, you, you sent me a copy of the book, and um, the f the first thing I did was was just open it up, and uh, the first thing I saw was was unfortunately uh, Jackie Gallagher's page, and um, you told me that she had a lot to do with with uh, the whole the research and and writing the book. Can you tell us a bit more about about that? Sure. Um, when I went to that uh, Triathlon Australia conference in two thousand and ten, the uh, person that I was told to talk to as soon as I said history. Um, uh, you know, triathlon history. They said, "Oh, talk to Jackie Fairweather," uh, and 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 you know, someone said she was the the historian. And what they were really referring to was that uh, triathlon. Um, Jackie, along with Nick Munting, had previously spent a fair bit of time trying to uh, put together uh, a proper list of. Uh, the triathletes who had uh, competed at the um, world championships and um, the Australian champions at the various um, distances and, and really tabulate and put all, all of that material together. So she had actually already started the process of trying to uh, document, I suppose, um, aspects of the sports past in Australia. So I was told to talk to Jackie and she was very encouraging from the very beginning and uh, we continued to have email contact from that point in time. Um, and uh, I interviewed her, of course, as part of the research for the book. And she actually loaned me her training diary from the year that she won the World Championships herself, 1996. Uh, and it's very interesting to see what a, a, a you know, champion triathlete does <laughs> day in and day out uh, leading up to, um, uh, to doing that. Um, but she also, uh, she just has that sort of mind which uh, she's so switched on and so clear and, and also prepared to say when she thinks that there's a, something that needs to be said or something's not quite right. I thought she'd be the perfect person to read over the drafts of the, the various chapters of the book uh, and give me feedback. And I wanted honest feedback. Uh, you know, I'd rather have people say this or that about the book before it's out there in print rather than actually, uh, you know, get it out there in print and then have everyone say it. <laughs> um, so I asked her if she would read over the um, book before I uh, published it, and she did. And she gave me a lot of very useful, very helpful feedback. She supplied me with a lot of her... <clears throat> Um, papers uh, from over time uh, to help me fill in gaps and um, then she was so supportive of the of the project she wrote a foreword as well for the book so I have in the book uh, one of the forewords is from Jackie Fairweather um, and I was and she also was a guest speaker at my book launch in June this this year so I was very fortunate to have Jackie involved in the project uh, and I'm very grateful to her for it and it re really gave me an appreciation of uh, not just her as an athlete, which is uh, evident when you read about her anyhow, but um, also her as a person and, and that mind, uh, that very astute, uh, intelligent mind, um, and just how much she supported the sport and contributed to the sport. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's an amazing piece of work, and uh, I think it's it would be an excellent, um, an excellent Christmas gift, wouldn't it, for, for a lot of triathletes? I think so. It's the sort of thing where... I've tried to present it in a way that you can have it on the coffee table, it looks nice and you can flick through and look at all the beautiful pictures, uh, but I also have at-a-glance boxes so that you, you can just sort of flick through and see, oh, so that's um, uh, uh, the Australian uh, champions who um, for this year or this year or this year or these are the Australians who finished in the top 10 at Kona every year or there's a, those sorts of statistics, you know, just stand out statistics you can look at. But there's also... Um, I've tried to uh, group the discussion into little um, blocks so you've got a subheading and you can just read like a page and, and go, wow, that's really interesting and you can put it down if you want to or you can just keep reading because you've sort of suddenly gone, oh, wow, that's really interesting. Um, so it's that sort of book where it's nice as a coffee table book, as a um, you know, pick up, read a little bit, put it down. But I've found there are a lot of people who just start reading and don't stop. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it's quite nice talking to those people as well because they really engage with the overall story as well. 
Um, and uh, yeah, it's so it's 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 people are connected to it in a lot of ways. Um, and uh, the way what I've seen is someone walking past, say, at Expo, and looking at the book, and then the person that's with them comes back five minutes later and says, "Quick, can I get that? I want to give it to them for Christmas." <laughs> and that's what I've found people doing is p- picking up the book for Christmas or for birthdays or Father's Day. Um, a lot of people got the book for Father's Day as well. Yeah. How can how can people get a copy? The best way is just to go online. We've got a website which is uh, the book's title is Multisport Dreaming: The Foundations of Triathlon in Australia. So we've got a website that is www.multisportdreaming altogether lowercase dot com. Uh, and if you if you look go to that, then there you can click right through to um, purchase a book online, and it can be delivered anywhere in the world. Uh, is there a deadline that they have to uh, order before the, so they can get it uh, for Christmas time? Within Australia, it's by the tenth of December. Uh, not sure. Uh, Garen, uh, yeah, if you if you've ordered by tenth of December within Australia, that should be fine. Internationally, I'm not sure uh, about the length of time it will take. I'd say sooner the the better. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, uh, Jane. Thanks very much for your time. Much appreciated. Um, anything else you wanna you wanna plug? Oh, people to thank. <laughs> yeah, there. I have to say there are an awful lot of people that uh, contributed to this book and were, were enthusiastic about this sport, this this book. And if I um, didn't receive that encouragement, then I, I wouldn't have proceeded with the book. So to every single person that I spoke to, even if, even if they don't see their name in print, everyone that I spoke to helped to shape my understanding of the sport, helped to contribute to the book one way or another. And in a way, I've thought about all of those people as I've been writing the book because I, um, I, I appreciate that everyone has their own experience. So to all those people who know that they've spoken to me somewhere along the way, it did make a difference. And I really appreciate those words that you shared with me, those experiences you shared with me, those files that you shared with me and so on. Um, uh, really, uh, it, it was a collective effort and I'm just simply the, the 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 person who was able to kind of sieve it down and put it together um you know and i hope i have a chance to continue continue to put all those stories down and capture all those wonderful stories that are meant to that should be out there and shared uh so thank you to everyone who has helped and contributed all right so is it going to be a follow-up book then for the 40 years or the 50 years oh. Uh, I think inevitably um, uh, many, many people have come up to me with um, fill-in stories um, and uh, I, I suspect that there will be some sort of follow-up book. At the moment, I'm actually working on a biography of Emma, Emma Carney um, mm-hmm. and I'm also sort of laying the groundwork for some other um, triathlon-related um, research. Uh, uh, triathlon is very good um even though there's still a way to go, triathlon's quite, got quite a good record in terms of its inclusion of women uh, and its encouragement of the inclusion of women. Uh, you know, our women athletes, in terms of media profile in the no- 1990s in particular, was um, very good. Uh, the demand for equal pay, uh, equal prize money to equal depth. Uh, we still have to fight that battle, but, uh, you know, that was started on a positive foot from the very beginning. Um, and uh, so I think that there's a great story out there about uh, uh, women uh, in the sport of triathlon um, as it compares to other sports as well. So that's something I'm interested in following up on as well. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of really interesting follow-up stories. I've got a feeling um, this is just the start. <laughs> and I look at it as uh, something that I can do that if it's of benefit to the sport, then I'm happy to keep on doing it. So as long as people continue to express an interest in seeing the sports history recovered and and put down in print, uh, then I'll continue to do it um, uh, because I think that's something that I can bring to the sport. Yeah, I think it's so, a definitely a good idea. I mean, people should maybe stop uh, investing in uh, the newest uh, carbon saddle post or something and actually pick up a copy of the book and learn about the history of the sport. Well, that's the thing. It is a rather expensive process. So uh, if I find myself in too much debt, then I might have to stop. <laughs> But other, other than that, I'll keep going. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thanks very much, uh, Jane. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.